Now the other thing that's really important about high altitude, the Andes were actually in the ocean. They were covered by ocean. Then when there were earthquakes and volcanoes, the Andes arose, and then you got these valleys coming off of the Andes. And what happens when you have these alluvial soils, and alluvial means that they were created by either glaciers or rivers, they were created by water, is that first of all you get marine deposits. And marine deposits have limestone. And limestone, I mean nobody knows why, there's lots of theories, but limestone is good for mines. But you get the, the bigger stones deposited in the higher altitude. So here, for example, Gualtajari is 5,000 feet elevation. Then you get the sands, which are, you know, a little smaller in the middle altitude. And then you get the clays in the lower altitude. And one place that you might know in Luján de Cuyo is called Agrelo. This is where the clays are, and this is where our winery, our pyramid winery is located. And the interesting thing is that actually in France, in saint emilion which is part of Bordeaux, is where Malbec was most famous. And they also have these clay soils. And Malbec was also grown in the Grave that has these stony soils. So it's, it's great when you start to really study these wine varieties that cross continents and you find that, you know, there's a lot of parallels. But what's completely different about Argentina is the high altitude because Bordeaux is basically at sea level. And here we are at 3,000 to 5,000 feet elevation. And the other element that's really important about the elevation is the sunlight. And what we found, we did this really cool research at the Catena Institute of Wine, is that the grapes at higher altitude have thicker skins. And it's not just because of the cooler climate, it's because the plant protects the grapes against the sun by thickening the skins. So the grapes at higher altitude have thicker skins. And this, combined with the high acidity, what does it give you? Worthy wines. And that's what really, what's really, really interesting about the Uco Valley and the cool climate of Argentina, that we can make really age-worthy Malbec. And the other thing about Malbec that you might want to know is that it has really, really deep roots. And that's why in Argentina, it can grow without American rootstocks because it's pretty immune to phylloxera nematodes. And the leaves are either trilobal, which you see one, two, three lobes, or they can be cuneiform, which means that they just have these little sort of jagged little peaks. Uh, but these are the different kinds of leaves for Malbec. And let's just drink some Malbec tonight. <laughs>